Hi there, I'm Lee, welcome back to iMind Blocks. So just a few days ago I released a video where I benchmarked uh, this graphics card. So it's the Asus Republic of Gamers um, Stripes Edition and it's a 1060 uh, GTX 1060. So I benchmarked it across a whole wide range of uh, mining algorithms, I tested on Ethereum, Zcash, Monero and then some other lesser known coins like Nexus. And what I tried to um, bring to you guys is the mining performance of this uh, graphics card and, but I only tested it using the stock settings. And the feedback that I got was, although that video was quite useful for some people, a lot of people were a bit disappointed that I didn't overclock the graphics card, because this is quite a high-end gaming graphics card. Um, it's got a triple fan design, a massive heatsink, and I think a lot of people, uh, the feedback that I got was that it was just a, a little bit disappointing that I didn't push the card very much to the limits. So in this video, what I want to do is kind of redo some of those tests, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it on Ethereum, Ethereum plus Decreed, Zcash and Monero. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the card to its absolute maximum. So I'm going to see the, the maximum performance that I can get out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the core clock, I'm going to push the memory clock, and at the same time I'm going to kind of reduce the power consumption of the card. So to get the maximum performance, maximum efficiency from this card, and see what the very best we can get from it. Now this is quite, like I say, a high-end gaming sort of um, a GPU, but overall it should give you kind of a rough kind of idea of what you can get from a typical GTX uh, 1060. So that's what we're going to go and do now. We'll start off with Ethereum first. I'll show you all my clock settings so you can see everything on the screen, and then we'll move on to the other algorithms. Like I say, I'll show you everything on the screen that you um, so you can reproduce the results for yourself. So uh, let's continue on, and we'll go over to the screen capture now. Okay, so welcome to the screen capture. So in this first test I'll be testing by mining Ethereum only. So let's start the miner up. So I'm using Claymore's dual Ethereum miner uh, version 9.8. So it's a GTX 1060. The drivers that I'm using are 385.41. Um, also you can see the details regarding this specific graphics card. Uh, it's got Samsung memory for reference there. So I'm just going to go back to the sensors tab and then I'll talk you through the settings that I'm going to be using for uh, mining Ethereum. So when I mined it using the stock settings, I was able to achieve 20.1 um, mega hashes, and the system used 159 watts in total. Uh, with the overclock settings, um, we can hit 24.5 uh, mega hashes and using 130 watts. Uh, sorry, 132 watts for the system total. So an improvement on performance and a reduction on uh, power consumption. So it's a win-win situation there. So the settings that I'm going to use, and I'll talk you through, um, I've already got a saved profile, so I'm just going to hit that and I'll talk you through the options. So I've got the power limit reduced down to 50. Um, sometimes what you can notice is that the core will kind of fluctuate and it will bump along, it will throttle a little bit. Uh, between this setting here sometimes it'll go it should be running around about uh, 14 30 sometimes it can go up a little bit up or down from there so uh, with the the power limit you can go between sort of uh, a, re a reduction of between sort of 50 to 60 percent and that will give you the sort of the optimized um, settings the temperature limit it doesn't really make any difference that just links the power limit to the temperature and um, you don't have to worry about that with the core clock i've got a reduction of minus 200 the core clock overall didn't really make any difference whether you increase it or reduce it to the to the mining performance. And the memory clock, I've got it at plus 800. Um, and sometimes I was able to go a little bit higher than that, but I found that around plus 825, um, often you get artifacts on the screen or the system would lock up. So for stability, I've gone at plus 800. So if you go back to the kind of the real uh, core um, frequencies and memory frequencies you can see here so it's easier to explain so during a lot of my testing i was mostly getting around 1430 megahertz on the core and um 23 uh, 52 for the memory so you can see the core clock is running a little bit slower now and that's because of the auto boost function it uh, regulates the boost um automatically and there's not much you can do there and um, like i say apart from adjusting that power limit but i found that having the power limit set to 50 gives a really good um, efficiency and performance ratio so now you can see on the miner itself uh, we're running at 24.5 mega hashes so that's about the best performance i think with some extreme tweaking you could probably get maybe a little bit more i've had about 24.7 not quite 25 mega hashes but maybe on some cards with uh, different types of memory but that was the maximum kind of performance I was able to achieve when mining Ethereum. 
So next up, let's move on to Ethereum and Decredo, and I can show you the performance um, I was able to get on that. So just start up the miner. Uh, the default intensity I've got set, which is um, 30. And um, some slight changes when mining in dual mining mode. So on this one, I increased the power limit to 60. And that was to help the core from uh, throttling. Um, I also increased the core uh, to plus 100. So the true core uh, speed is, um, you should see it coming up there now. I think from my notes, um, I had it at 1822, but it, like I say, will bump around in that kind of ballpark based on the automatic settings, which have a habit of um, interfering with things. Um, so you can see it settled down at 1822 uh, there, which is what I have in my notes. So um, when mining Ethereum and Decreed um, from my notes, I've got that we can hit 23.2 mega hashes on Ethereum and 232 mega hashes on Decreed uh, with the system using 150 watts. So compared with the stock settings uh, at stock, I was able to get 19.4 um, and 194 um, at 170 watts. So again, um, significantly more in performance um, for less wattage. So uh, also, just to go back, the memory clock is the same as when mining Ethereum only at plus 800. So you can see those um, stats rolling in now on the miner, um, 23 mega hashes and 230 mega hashes um, for Degreed. So that's that uh, mining performance. Next up, let's move on to uh, Zcash. So I'm going to use the EBWF miner. Start that up. Just reset the GPU settings there because uh, for Zcash I had quite a lot of um, different settings. So the power limit for Zcash, I, I left it at 100. The temperature limit, I'll, I'll leave it as it is as well. And the core I had increased to plus 125. And the memory uh, is plus 800. So Zcash is a lot more responsive to changes in the core frequency. It also uses um, significantly more uh, power compared to when mining Ethereum. Um, so you can see, if we look at the uh, tech power up GPU-Z, uh, if we've got the um, yeah, sorry, power consumption there, you can see it's using virtually 90% of the card's power. So it's using a lot more power. And from the, uh, the watt meter, it's using 198 watts on the watt meter. So using a, a lot of extra power there in, in comparison with when mining Ethereum, for example. So you can see uh, on that sort of basis, uh, from my notes, I had it at um, 355, so, and it's coming in at 352 there. So thereabouts, 355 is a ballpark sort of figure there. Uh, in comparison to the stock numbers, I was getting 315 on stock settings, and that was using the 183. So uh, with the overclock settings, you're using 10 more watts, but you're getting almost um, 35, 40 um, more um, cells per second. I did also do one other extra thing, and that was um, kind of like an eco mode. So if I change the power limit to 60, I'm just gonna unlock the temp, keep that unlocked there because I don't want it throttling the card if it gets a little bit too hot. Um, I had the core at 125 and the same memory. But what you should see is that the um, the hash rate is reduced. It comes in about 3, 2, 1, uh, back on my notes. But the wattage is also reduced as well. And it goes down to 145 watts on the Wattman. So you could use this mode as more of a like an eco kind of mode. If you don't want that extreme performance and you want something that's a little bit more efficient, you could do do it this way. So you're getting most of the performance, but you're using um, quite a bit less power. So I'd call that like an eco mode option. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at Monero and I'll show you the results that I got there. So I'm just using the XMR miner for Monero. I'll just go back to default settings and then I'll tweak it. So power limit, I had it 60. The Monero algorithm is a really energy efficient algorithm. It doesn't really pull on the card very much at all. Most of the time, um, uh, particularly with the NVIDIA uh, cards, you'll be using less than 50% of the power from the card. 
So similar settings um, as before. I did notice if you change the core clock, if you kind of just set it to zero, um, you're gonna lose kind of like five hashes either way, but the performance or the power consumption doesn't really change uh, very much at all. So at one, two, five, and then 800 for the memory clock. Power limit down to 60%. Um, we'll let that come in a couple of refreshes. Yep, and f between 330 and 335 um, hashes per second. And we're using, for the system, 122 watts. So just how that compares to stock. Um, on stock, I was getting 445 hashes per second, and it was using 115. So we're only using um, seven more watts, but we're getting over a, um, just about 100, sorry, not quite 100, um, 90, 90 hashes extra for an extra 10 watts. So a uh, very good performance increase um, from not significantly more power usage there. Okay guys, so that's it. I'm gonna leave it here for the benchmarking. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Okay, so that's it for this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching. Please uh, give it a like if you did like it or consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of this type of content. I'll see you guys on the next video. Till then, bye.